Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am showcasing one more of the itty bitty stamps from Unity Stamps from my Growing in Unity Week. Make sure you leave a comment below to enter the contest for a gift certificate um, that you can pick out whatever you want from Unity. So make sure you leave a comment below. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe also. And today I thought I would just play I have these Ken Oliver color bursts and I had this idea. The stamp I'm using is called Seeds Within and it has a really cute, well, kind of a really nice sweet sentiment. It says, the seeds we plant within are the harvest we have to give. So I wanted to do a really cool watercolor background. I don't, I don't think the card turned out like my original vision, but the thought is that it is a uh, blurry farm scene, like a uh, field image. Now, I live in Wisconsin, so it's like something really easy for me to imagine. But um, I'm thinking like wheat fields, golden wheat fields, tree lines, you know, it, it's like farmland. I think that it lends itself very easily to the sentiment, the seeds we plant within are the harvest we have to give. Um, if you planted the wheat seeds, the wheat would be what you had to give. But you know, the things that you plant, they are what you have to give. Kindness, compassion, tenacity, those kind of things. So anyway, that's my thought on this card. And I really wanted to use my watercolors. I actually didn't even use them. I used just these color bursts. And then I ended up pulling out some Inktense pencils that I received as a gift and um, and some white ink. <laughs> That's what I ended up using. Just spoiler alert. So my task for you is to tell me if I achieve that like dreamy uh, watercolor-esque farmland scene. Now I am going to tell you that the blue that I end up using probably not the blue I should have used. I probably should have watered it down or um, used a lighter color, but we'll get there. So, so far I have blended on some water and then sprinkled on the Ken Oliver co uh, color bursts in different colors. And I used a wide brush to kind of smoosh it around and put the streaks in and then also kind of build the um, structure of the trees. Now I'm adding some more color. I added a little bit of red and now I'm adding a little bit of green to give the definition of trees. And when I was using the black, I did use my very thin lined paintbrush to go ahead and give the idea of the trunks and the branches of the trees far off in the distance. I almost turned this into a sympathy card because I thought an image like this would be very good for a sympathy card. Um, but I decided to stick with the sentiment that I had picked and I'm glad it did. I think it turned out well, uh, or well enough. Anyway, <laughs> does anything ever turn out like exact, exactly as you had anticipated? I don't think so. At least not in my experience. Something is always just a little bit different. So there, I was just reinforcing that, uh, horizon line where the ground and the sky meet. And I am going to use some blue. And this is the blue I was talking about. I probably should have watered this down quite a bit more. These aren't traditionally meant to paint like this with. They're meant to sprinkle, kind of like I did at the beginning. But usually you can sprinkle them on the paper and then spray water over top. And it activates the little particles that are in there. And then you get these cool bursts of color, which is why they're called color bursts. But I decided I wanted to use them this way. And I guess I wouldn't be me if I wasn't trying to do something different and weird. <laughs> so I had just put a little bit of water on my glass mat for each one of these and then just tapped in a little bit of the color and mixed it and made paint. And um, here's where I was like, oh, I think this might be just too dark of a blue. But I figured I'd let it dry and see what it looked like after the entire thing had had a chance to dry. But while I'm at it, I went ahead and just reinforced some of these colors at the bottom here, painting in more of that green that's an olive green color burst. And it's got all of these browns and greens in them. They're very, very um, 
earth toned for sure. And then I do want this to look kind of like a wheat field, a golden wheat field, you know, it's just beautiful. They've written songs about it, but that's what, you know, we have as a country to give is, is these great, um, grains and, you know, things that farmers have. And so I just thought it worked really well with the sentiment because personally, like I said, those seeds that you plant, you know, in your children and your friends and your family, that is what you have to give is, is you can reap the harvest of that. You teach your children to be kind, you will get kindness in return and that's what you, re you reap. So here I'm just taking it off of this block. I don't know if you've ever seen um, watercolor paper like that. It's gummed on both ends, so you don't have to tape it down. I was a little messy with my water, so I did get it on the edge of one of the pieces, but it's fine. Here I'm using some thrifted um, waterproof uh, fine liners, and these are by Close to My Heart. And um, I use just this brown just to kind of reinforce the branches and the trunks on the trees. I'm also going to add just a little bit of a line at the horizon just to separate it. And I still, I'm not happy, but I'm moving on because trust the process, Renee. Trust the process, right? So I decided that's where I'm going to put my stamp. And I lined up my um, panel in my platform here and I'm going to add this sentiment and I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black Ink because it should stamp just fine over the watercolor paper and the watercoloring and it did it just took a little few tries I think three or four I actually stamped it it's I think what happened is it's the, the flower isn't exactly drawn perfectly so I kept looking at the flower thinking oh I didn't stamp that right but that's not true, it's just how it's drawn. And then my very best friend in the entire world sent me these ink tense pencils a couple of years back. And um, I like them, they're really kind of cool. You can color on with the pencil and they're really, they're not like watercolor pencils, they're more like ink, which is why it's ink tense. And you can color on and then you can activate it with water and once it's on and activated with water, it's permanent. So, um, if you ever want to draw something or, or whatever, and then, um, watercolor over it, you can do it with these. They're, they're very cool, but I wanted to fill in the floral image. Um, and I wanted to add a little bit of extra, um, depth and shading inside the trees. I'm using, I'm using a deep brown here, um, in order to reinforce the trees. I'm going really lightly at it. I'm just barely putting the pigment onto the paper because when I activate it with my water, it's going to want to, there's going to be more there than I think. So I'm being very careful. I also decided to reinforce that horizon line just a little bit, even though I had just kind of done that with that fine line pen. When I activated the water or activated the ink, I wanted to make sure I did the lightest colors first, so I activated the color that I used on the flowers, which was like an orange, and then the green of the stem. And it's a black stamped stem, but because that it's watercolor paper, there were some holidays in the stamping, so I was able to fill that in with green, and then I blended out that horizon line, and then each one of the branches and trunks of these trees in the background, just so that that ink would now become permanent and I wouldn't smear anywhere on this paper. It didn't take me long to do it and I think that it added quite a bit of depth to the the idea that these trees are beyond a field of wheat or you know golden crops or um, riches you know. So I um, really hope that, that that could be understood from the way I colored this. And then I decided to pull out um, some pattern paper. Now this pattern paper is very, very old and there's only a couple of sheets left in this book. It's My Mind's Eye Indie Chic Nutmeg and that's the paper that I used. Um, I just went through and matched up with each pattern to see if one of them um, worked better than the other. And I really like this yellow floral. Um, I thought it also worked well with the theme of the card 
and kind of that idea that I'm trying to portray. Then I trimmed down my panel. I didn't want any of those um, edges that didn't have, you know, paint on them. I wanted it to have a nice clean edge. And then I thought, oh, this blue is really dark. I really wasn't liking it even after. So I decided to try to lift it. And while I could lift some of it, um, I definitely wasn't lifting enough and it wasn't doing what I wanted. So I pulled out this ink from Ink on 3. It's white pigment ink. It's actually a fusion ink. I don't know. <laughs> but it's very juicy and it does a really good job. And at first I tried with my finger just to add some to kind of model the sky and maybe add clouds. And I just wasn't really sure that that was um, defined enough. So I pulled out a cotton swab and I'm using a cotton swab to dab on more of this white ink. And I really do think that it helped break up that really dark blue in the sky. It was just such a bold sky color. I should have, I should have definitely toned it down when I first started, but well, once you put it on the paper, you know, you just kind of got to go with it. So I added um, some of this white ink to, like I said, tone it down, add some variation to the sky, maybe some, the idea of clouds, just so it's like off in the distance and it isn't just this blue curtain of stuff behind the trees. And I did work on it for just a little bit, making sure that I had it right. And I think I did okay. And I really do like how it looks on this paper. So I chose to mat my focal panel on some craft card stock. If you've been following the videos, you know that I used craft card stock earlier in the week, and that is a remnant from that card. And then I pulled out this blue card stock. Oh, first I trimmed this. Now, I was trying to decide what size card I was going to make because I didn't really measure my panel. I just trimmed it up and decided what I was going to do. This would not fit on an A2 card. It would fit on a 5x7, but I would have to do it horizontally. Um, I could make a slim line out of it, but I just made one of those. So I decided to, again, make an A6 card, which I just made yesterday. <laughs> but I do like the A6 size. It's really nice size. It's six and a quarter by four and a half, and you definitely get a lot more workable area just in that little bit more space. So here I matted it in this bright blue color. I just thought it definitely popped on that sky and it made that sky look like it was intentional, <laughs> which it was not, but don't tell anybody. I won't tell anybody if you don't tell anybody. I just adhered this down. Now it is warped just a tiny bit, but not as bad as it could have been because it was on that gummed block. So here I'm just using liquid glue and I use the Barely Art Craft Precision Glue, Precision Craft Glue. And they have a little fine tip on it, which I really do enjoy. And um, it's been holding up well. I do like how well it does work. But there's a couple other really, really good ones. Actually, I think any glue that you get is just fine. <laughs> Honestly, if you're making cards and you want to stick paper together, if you find an adhesive that does that, good on you. That's good. It'll work. It's fine. It's perfect. So here I, of course got this crooked and I tried to fix it and I fixed it slightly but not enough and you know what it is what it is and it's crooked <laughs> here is my card base it's just a top folding a6 card base and I am going to stamp the exact same sentiment that I use on the front of the card on the inside of the card I'm going to use that ranger letter it's shadow gray ink because you can write around it or write on top of it right over it but I thought, why not just finish it with the same sentiment on the front? It's fine. Um, nobody said you had to have different sentiment on the front and on the back. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach my card panel to the card base, making sure that I adhere it really well. Not only um, is it got to be adhered to the card base, but also, you know, that panel isn't exactly flat. So I wanted to make sure it was adhered really, really well. So here's my card. I think it turned out okay. Here's the inside. I actually really adore that. So let me know um, what you think and uh, make sure you leave a comment below and enter the contest. And as I always say, give cards generously. Bye.